Hey guys, my name is Tyler and today I'm going to be giving you some quick tips and advice on how to play Lindsey Sterling's Crystallize the Drop Part, which is like the main chorus of her song. Now, I've been watching uh, different covers on YouTube of different people playing the violin on Lindsey Sterling's Crystallize and I gotta admit, some of them are really good, I gotta give a good hand for them. But I noticed that some people are struggling a bit, either because um, it's too difficult for them, or maybe they just like uh, need like a special advice on how to play a specific part right, especially the drop, because that's considered like the hardest part in her song "Crystallize." So as you all know, this is what the drop sounds like. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, okay, so that part itself, I mean, could be worked a little bit better. But there are a few points that I would like to make out on the way I play this specific part. The way I play this part, um, bowing-wise, now you might not see if I just lower the screen. Um, if you noticed, I'm like more relaxed. You haven't seen my body jerking around as much. The reason why that is, is because while I'm playing those sixteenth notes, yeah, I'm moving this part of my arm as well because this is the only part you're supposed to move, not your whole entire arm, only this part. If you noticed, I'm relaxing my wrist, so my wrist, I don't know how you describe it, your wrist basically like bounces, um, I guess to the direction of your cubit, or the cubit area of your arm. Oh, one thing that I didn't notice before, if you look at my, if you look at this part of my arm, um, this is, it's keeping like a, a steady beat of quarter notes while my wrist is doing the 16th notes. I'm not sure how to explain this really. I guess maybe it's just because I put more emphasis on the first beat, that's why it looks like my arm is going like this while my wrist is just um, playing all the 16th notes. Therefore, compared to this, is, as you notice, I'm, I'm using my whole entire arm from the joint of my shoulder all the way down, and then well, as I start doing this, my whole body jerks around, and that doesn't look, that doesn't look nice at all. It looks completely unappealing. It doesn't look that good. It makes it look like you're struggling just to play those like, What you want instead is to relax your wrist and then maybe do the way I do but like put emphasis on the beat of every quarter note so therefore your body doesn't jerk around as much, your violin doesn't shake around as much and therefore you can just do this like nice and in a relaxed nice way. Instead of and I'm not doing this on purpose like I mean I'm moving my arm in purpose but I'm not playing my I'm not playing the notes wrong on purpose because when it comes to playing the violin you have to have the perfect I don't know, posture the perfect posture you gotta learn how to play the violin itself correctly as you notice while I was using my whole entire arm my bow is not perpendicular to the bridge which is a huge issue that I've seen in many orchestras while I was in high school you want to make sure that your bow is completely parallel to the bridge and it doesn't go over the fingerboard otherwise it'll be It'll make that sort of glossy sound and it's also really hard to change from string to string because the more you go up the fingerboard then this um, 
I guess the strings are more closer to each other. It doesn't give you a plain space from here down to here because as you notice, the more it goes up this way, the more spaced out the strings become. Okay, so we're just taking care of the bowing part, knowing knowing how to play this in a nice relaxed way. Now it's time for the notes itself. Okay, when I hear people do the drop, you know, to be honest, I'm, I'm like always afraid of people that are going to start playing the drop because instead of hearing this, I hear this. Alright, so this song itself, in the beginning part, it's in an A minor key, so there are no sharps and no flats, and then later on when it gets to this, it hits a B flat. The whole song overall is in D minor, but the first part is in like an A minor kind of uh, key signature. The wrong notes that I played were mostly the, F sh the Fs and the, the Gs. The Fs on the... On the E string and the D string, and then the G on the E string itself, making a G sharp instead of a G natural. It's like I said, in the A minor key, um, all the notes are natural, and there shouldn't be anything sharp or flat. So the A and the F, A F D A F, it should be all natural instead of. Which sounds really horrible, by the way. And then when you start going from... You don't want to play that G sharp, otherwise it'll sound like... Or including the F sharp. You have to know that to play F natural on the E string, it has to be in a half position, which is lower than your normal first finger, which makes it F sharp. You would have to shift down a half step in order to make an F natural. And same thing with the D string, instead you're doing a low second finger instead of the typical uh, second finger making an F sharp. So you're making an F natural. So that's pretty much the thing that bothers me a lot. Also, okay, after you get to the first part, and then the next part starts on the G. This one is a bit hard because um, the starting note it should automatically be a G natural. And then as you get back up, you go from E natural, or just E, and then C natural. As you go from E, C, G, from C to G is a perfect fifth. So you're going to hold your uh, third finger down between C and G on both the G and the D string. So you're holding down your third finger for both strings so you can play both the C. That sounds horrible. At least like that. In order to actually hit both of those notes to go from. What I just do basically I just like shift my hand this way a little bit while I go from C to G, but I don't move my fingers in either direction. I just twist my wrist. Like that one. Um, and then you go from E to C natural. Again, just like F natural on the D string, you're going to use your low second finger on the C for the C on the A string. Instead of C sharp, which is a high two, say you want to do a low two. And then this one is crucial. I know there are some people out there who love to use like open strings and I'm not sure if it's too hard or they're just too lazy to throw down their fourth finger to play you know either D, A, E and then you have to use a fourth finger for a B because there's no B string. Um, it's crucial that you go from G from E. Therefore the only strings that you're crossing is just from D to A which are right close to each other because if you just do from G to the E string, you're going to loop over the A string and you could possibly make a mistake and it's just really difficult. Plus, when you're holding down your second finger, maybe, you're also going to be touching the E string, so... 
It's just more difficult doing that instead of just throwing down your fourth finger on the A string just to get that E. Plus, it also sounds better compared to the wiry E string itself. I don't know if you guys can hear that on the video, but if you're like right in front of me and if you hear me play this, you can tell that the E string is sounding like more wiry and more high pitched, or I should say high toned. They're both the same pitch, but the E string itself is more higher toned and more scratchy and wiry than the fourth finger A, because the A string is thicker than the E string. And then the next part is starting on F. What I, also, I use my fourth finger for the A. And then I use the A string after that part. I'm in the second part of the drop, by the way. Okay, that part itself. That part I just did right there. Um... The first part it goes from wait I forgot how it goes. Okay, in the first section of the drop you're going from. In the second part, it's really hard to explain. I wish I could like have my sheet music on to show it to you. Okay, listen to the difference between these two. Can you? I'm gonna play these two parts and then you're gonna figure out what is different about these two. Here's the second one. That part right there. Those last uh, four notes I played was D and A. In the first part, I went from D to F. But in this part instead, I went from D to A. And then I do the... I hope you guys are getting this because it's really hard to explain. Like I said, I wish I had the sheet music to show you, but um, I don't know. That's just when I was like listening to the soundtrack, I thought it was F, but no, it was this in the second part of the drop anyways. Yeah, so I guess that I covered about everything about the drop. Just make sure overall that you're relaxing your wrist so that you can play this in a more relaxed fashion instead of being all tense and jerking around all the time because that doesn't look it doesn't look appealing at all. You want to be as relaxed as possible. And also, please, please, please. Play the right notes because I don't want to sound rude and all. I really don't want to sound rude. I'm really sorry if some of you might get offended at this, but I get mentally nauseous when I hear someone playing an instrument like out of tune. And hearing from my orchestra teacher, and I had to 100% agree on this, it is completely unacceptable to play out of tune notes because if you're playing out of tune notes, then you're just playing the whole song wrong. And it just like ruins the nice flow. Instead of. Okay, so I hope this helps for those of you who love Lindsay Sterling like I do. And for those of you who uh, enjoy playing the violin and that would like to know how to actually like play it correctly. And. Yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helps and have a great day. Bye.